G'day guys, my name's Dave from Guitar Zero to Hero and in this video I'm going to be talking about electric guitar tone and I'm also going to be deconstructing and breaking down the guitar tones from 10 iconic guitar riffs. Now those 10 riffs are a part of a video I just released, the Strat versus Les Paul iconic riffs throughout the years. In this video I'll be using the Boss Guitarna 50 to emulate all the guitar tones but all these principles that I'll be talking about do apply universally to any amp that you sort of have. You don't need the Boss Katana, but I like the Boss Katana because it's versatility and all the effects are inbuilt. And of course, for all these tones that I'm breaking down, I'll have the Boss Katana tone patches available to download in the link in the description below. So let's start with some basic guidelines for creating a good electric guitar tone. Now, whether you're using a Strat or a Les Paul, the first thing you really need to do is understand how the tone and pickup controls work. Now, when you're creating a guitar tone, you want a solid foundation on which to build your tone off. As the saying goes, you can't polish a turd. So if you're starting off with a really yucky guitar tone, it's gonna be really difficult to emulate what you want if you're using settings that are completely off to begin with. So with that in mind, pickup settings are very important and you need to sort of understand what each pickup sounds like and when you'd want to use those certain pickups. Now, of course, you also need to know what the tone knobs do. Now, the tone knobs will adjust the frequencies coming out of the guitar, uh, to put it simply. So if you turn all your tone settings down, it's going to be very, it's going to sound like you're underwater. It's going to cut a lot of the high uh, frequencies off so as a general rule of thumb always have your tone all the way up unless you're a bit more advanced and you know what you're doing with the tone knobs then I would just always have them up at 10. Same with volume when you're starting as a beginner I would say just roll your volume all the way up to you know 8, 9, 10 and when you're more advanced you'll know what to do in terms of dialing it back when you need to and dialing it up when you need to but as a beginner, let's start at, you know, 10 all around. Now on strats, there's five pickup selections you can choose from, generally speaking. If you have a strat that has three single coils, you can either choose the bridge, the bridge and the middle pickup, so a combination of the two, the middle by itself, the middle and the neck pickup together, or just the neck pickup itself. I'm not gonna go too in depth into the characteristics of each one, but generally speaking, the bridge pickup is where you're going to get that trebly tone where you can really cut through the mix. It's going to be more sharp, for a lack of a better term, than all the other pickups. So all the way down is where you want to do a lot of your leads and your solos. And conversely, if you go all the way to the neck, I would say this is the warmest pickup. It's going to cut off a lot of those harsh high-end notes. So I really like playing, generally speaking, on the neck pickup. It's definitely my favorite pickup for playing clean tones. And then the other options vary as well. But as I said, I'm not gonna get into too much detail there. So let's talk about Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. Now, this is an amazing song. It's got just one of the most smoothest guitar tones going around. Now, what pickup are we gonna be using? So I think for this particular song, the neck pickup can work, although it is almost a little bit too warm. So I've just got a clean amp channel here. We'll talk about that later, but start off with the pickup and the amp without any effects. So you wanna have your effects off first because you want a good foundation to build off. So that's not bad. So that's pretty good, but Actually, I think the neck middle pickup, it, it's a little more crisp, if you ask me. And that's the tone I think we should base it off. So neck middle pickup is where we're going. Next, let's move to the actual amp. Now on the Boss Katana, you have a selection of clean, crunch, lead, and brown. And the one you choose is pretty important. Obviously, we have a clean guitar tone for this song, so let's stick with clean as the channel. Now, the gain is a setting that will affect how gritty our tone will get the harder we play. 
And generally speaking, I really like that dynamic where, you know, let's turn the gain all the way up. If you start to play harder, you can notice how there's a little bit of distortion there, but we don't want too much. So let's just take it to about 60, roughly. Now every amp will have a gain setting, generally speaking. And your volume is literally just how loud the, the signal is gonna be. It's not gonna change your tone at all. Volume is just, you know, the, the, the amplitude of the sound that you're gonna be hearing. But gain is a little more important because with the gain too much and you're gonna to get too gritty, too little, it's gonna be super clean. So let, let me take all the gain down. As hard as I play, it's going, it's gonna A, be quiet, but it's not gonna, you know, there's no balls to it. So in my mind, unless you want super, super clean tone, you do want a little bit of gain so that there's room for dynamics there. So again, let's push that back up to about 60. Now the EQ is something that every single amp will have as well. Now the EQ will shape the sound and treble will obviously be the higher sort of range uh, frequencies of your guitar. Middle are the mids and then bass are the bassy notes. So for this particular tone, we've got everything more or less set to five out of 10 or 50 out of 100. So that's it for our bass tone. We have a clean amp, literally just a clean amp, our neck middle pickup and our EQ sort of flat and our gain at about 60. So. so as you can hear, that's a really good start. But as you can hear, we're missing that ambience. And what that is, is the reverb. So here I'm going to put a spring reverb on. There's different types of reverbs you can get and they all have different sounds, but spring is a very natural um, analog sounding reverb. The important sort of setting here is the reverb time for this particular guitar tone. Um, if you listen to this song, the, the, the reverb time is quite long. Um, when you play a note, that note sort of like reverberates for quite a while. And so I've got it set to about 3.4 here. There's a whole bunch of other settings here. We won't get into them too much. Um, but yeah, you can, you can make the reverb more prominent if you want to, but we're just going to leave it around here and this is what it sounds like. Let's move on to our next tone on the Strat and that's Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix. So let's again get our bass settings right. So you always need to start with the guitar. What's the pickup that's going to do the job? For distortions, so distorted tones generally, you'll wanna be using the bridge pickup because that's gonna cut through. If you have your um, neck pickup for distorted tones, it's gonna sound a little muddy. So. Let's cut through. Jimmy's a lead player, so he wants to be heard. Um, so we'll be using our bridge pickup here. In terms of amp settings, you know, out of the four amps that we can use for the Katana, clean, crunch, lead, or brown, we could go with a few different options here, but crunch is your more classic rock tone and it's a good basis, um, so, Right now, I've just got the crunch tone on. I've got a little bit of gain on. Um, my EQ is you know, as follows. I've rolled the bass back a little bit. Um, so right now, this is the bass tone. So as you can hear, it's got a bit of crunch to it. But it's not quite there yet. And this is where you're going to need to do a little bit of research. Now, if you wanna recreate tones from famous artists, do the research. Your best friend is Google, and there are so many people out there with vast knowledge on you know, the, the amps, the effects that famous players used. So use that to your advantage, go to Google, you know, um, 
figure out what pedals these guitarists used during their recordings. And Jimi Hendrix was very well known for using a muff. So in our case, we can go to the booster setting and we've got a 60s fuzz. Now, when you turn on a pedal, the pedal's got its own settings, generally speaking, if you have a, a stomp box and drives a very important parameter when it comes to distortion pedals and um, boost pedals. So drive is again, is going to be a little bit like your gain. It's like how hard are you gonna push this distortion? So for this particular tone, we got it up pretty high. So let's hear what we have now. <laughs> So we're almost there, but let's add one more thing and it's reverb. Again, reverb will be a very common thing to uh, all these tones. Reverb is very, a very useful tool when it comes to guitar tone. Um, but be warned, don't use too much reverb. If you use too much reverb, you'll sound like you're underwater. Um, you'll be too wet, as they say. Um, so go easy on the reverb, use it sparingly. So we're going to go here over the reverb and I'm going to turn on our reverb and you can hear now, it reverberates a tiny bit, not a whole lot though. Our reverb time's a bit shorter than what we had in slow dancing. So let's listen to this. There you have it. Now there'll be a little bit of, you know, muddiness and and humming to these distorted tones. Generally speaking, when you're when you're using uh, a strat, you know, single coils, they like to to hum and and buzz. Uh, that's just the nature of these guitars. Uh, whereas the Les Pauls, you know, when you have humbuckers, that's going to really reduce that sort of hum. But that's the nature of these guitars. But you know. There's a lot of tones that these can do that those can't because of the single uh, coils. For the next tone on our strat, let's break down Sultan's Swing by Dire Straits. Now again, do your research. If you do a Google search, you'll, you'll know that Mark Knopfler loves using compression. And um, obviously this tone is very clean. So let's start with the clean channel. Um, the research that I've done has suggested that he uses his bridge middle pickup. So we're obviously going to use a clean amp as well because we've got a clean tone. Our gain's really pulled back here because it's super clean tone. And on our EQ, we're going to boost the bass a little bit and uh, the treble and just keep the mid where it is. So if I'm just playing that tone by itself, It's kind of twangy in a way. Um, there's not a whole lot to it, but let's go and add our compression. So this compression is really gonna boost this signal up and let's hear it sounds. So already you can hear that it's, it's boosted. It's a lot louder than it was before. So we've got the compression down, but again, still missing one little thing and that again is our reverb. So let's add our reverb in. Notice how you can hear that reverberation, it's very subtle. But that makes a lot of difference. So that's it for our tone. Now let's move on to our next tone, which is where the streets have no name by U2. Now the Edge is an amazing guitarist He's very underrated and his use of effects and tone is incredible. Let's break down this tone and of course, let's start with our pickup settings. Do the research and you'll find that the edge uses the bridge middle for this particular tone. So we've got our pickup settings. Now let's move on to our amp. Clean is our obvious choice because it is a clean tone. Our gain is somewhere around 50 and our EQ is generally flat, but we have boosted our bass here. 
So if I play the riff. Now that sounds cool, but we got no effects yet. So it's pretty dry. Well, reverb's our first one. So let's add our reverb in and let's hear how it sounds. A little better. So again, that's a very subtle reverb, but where this tone really excels is with its use of delay. We're going to turn that on. Now the important parameter here for delay is delay time. So you know, how long after that first hit is it going to then repeat itself? And then you got feedback as well. So feedback's how long it's gonna keep repeating itself. So if you really turn down the feedback, I'll do that now. It literally just repeats itself once. But if we turn that back up to around about 30, where we had it, it's just gonna keep feeding back and then sort of drown out. If you turn that feedback up to 100%, it's probably not gonna stop feeding back. It's just gonna go again and again and again. And Delay time again is the distance between each delay, as I noted before. Again, I did my research, found out that the Edge uses a delay time of roughly 360 milliseconds. It's dependent on the song. You want it to match the, the tempo. Now let's play along and see how it sounds. Very cool. That's pretty much it. There is one little extra thing though, and I actually learned this for the first time whilst doing the research on this tone. And that cool tip is this. The Edge uses picks that have these grooves on them. So these small bumps. Now I've got them on my pick here, and they're typically used to just get a better grip of the pick. Strike along the strings. And what actually happens is it gives the string a more chimey sound. You can actually hear the difference. So that's using the edge, and this is using a normal pick. Notice how it's like, it's a lot more dull, but if you use the edge, pun intended, it's a whole lot chimier. And it really brings that riff to life. Let's talk about the final tone that I played on the Strat in the Strat versus Les Paul video. And that riff is Can't Stop by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Amazing track. John Frushanti is a master guitarist. So again, let's start with a pickup. I'm gonna be using the bridge pickup here because it's a very twangy, it's very, it really cuts through the mix. It's a really um, trebly sort of tone. So I'm gonna use the bridge. Um, in terms of amps, let's use a clean amp because it's quite a clean tone. There's not a lot of distortion to it. Now you'll see that my EQ's uh, fairly flat, but the treble again is up because I really wanna accentuate that twang. And the key part to this tone, in my opinion, is that you really got to push the gain. So if you'll see here, my gain is at 99. So if I'm playing harder on the guitar, it will start to break up. You'll start to hear a little bit of distortion. But if you play it quietly, it's a uh, it's clean tone. But if you really give it some grit, you get that cool um, break up. Of the, uh, of the tone. So that is the important part of this tone and that's literally it. It's a very basic tone to emulate. You don't need much, but the Strat is an important part. If you try to play this on a Les Paul, it's just not gonna sound right. And then we have something like this. So let's move on to the Les Paul tones. Now on a Les Paul, typically speaking, the pickup configuration is different to a Strat. So we typically have two humbuckers here and only a three-way selector switch. So you can use your bridge pickup, you can use a combination of the bridge and neck, or you can just use the neck. But the same rules kind of apply here, 
where the bridge pickup is where you're gonna get a lot of your more trebly, grittier tones. Your lead playing is gonna be there and your softer, more mellow tones are gonna be on the neck pickup. So same rules sort of apply. Now let's start with one of the coolest tones in this video and that's Money For Nothing by Dire Straits. Super, super cool guitar riff. Now let's start with the pickup. We're gonna be using our bridge pickup because it's distorted. So we wanna have that tone. Now our tone is distorted, right? So now there's two different routes you can go down in order to get a distorted tone. You can use a clean amp channel and then put a distortion pedal or a overdrive in front of it. Or you can just use an amp that already has a lot of balls and grit to it. So we're going to be using a lead amp channel here. Now the lead amp channel's already got a lot of distortion inbuilt into it with the gain. So if we just play the raw tone through this lead channel, it's gonna sound like this. So quite a nice crunchy tone there. Now again, I did my research, find out what Mark Knopfler uses, and this tone, not surprisingly, has a bit of reverb. So let's turn on our reverb first. So we got a little bit of reverb there, and you can hear already it's changed the sound a little bit. Nearly there but we're missing just one little thing. And again, if you do your research, uh, people suggest that Mark Knopfler uses a wah here that's um, in the up position. So let's go to our effects and we're gonna use the T wah here. Again, these principles of tone apply universally, but the reason I'm using the boss is just because it has everything in the one spot. It has all your effects and a selection of amps to choose from as well. So it's it's uh, a great package. But if you were using your own amp, you'd need a wah here, or you'd need a multi-effects pedal that has a wah in it. So let's turn the wah on. And um, there's a lot of settings here, I'm not gonna go through them, but polar is whether the wah is up or down, and let's just leave it up. Now what the wah does, fundamentally speaking, is it just cuts out certain frequencies or boosts certain frequencies. So let's hear how it sounds now with the wah and you'll notice how much that adds to this tone. All right, let's break down our next tone and it's Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Now this one was a little bit tricky to get close to the recording, but um, again, basic fundamentals apply here. Start with the pickup. We're gonna use our bridge pickup because it's a distorted tone. Generally speaking, we use bridge pickup there. And I'm gonna use the crunch channel here. It's uh, you know that really sort of rock and roll tone. It's not too heavily distorted, but um, distorted enough. So we've got a crunch channel here, the gain's at about 40, so not a whole lot here, but we're going to be adding a distortion pedal in front of it to really make it a bit bigger. So right now it sounds like this. So decent tone, a little bit of grit there, um, but let's add our, but let's add our distortion pedal on top of it. Yeah, it's sounding close, but it's still a little too uh, dry. So we'll turn on our reverb. Let's see how that sounds now. Now the reverb I've used is very subtle. Not a whole lot there. Again, if you use too much, it's gonna sound really uh, muddy and, and uh, not crisp. So be very careful with the reverb you use. Now finally, I've added a little bit of delay here, but the delay time is very, very short. Now, by doing this, what you're all, what you're effectively doing is kind of like doubling the signal because it's it's being played back right after you're playing it. It almost sounds like you're doubling up the guitar, and what we get is this. <laughs> It's very subtle, but that delay 
adds quite a bit. So that's Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Let's move on to our next Les Paul tone, which is I Believe in a Thing Called Love by The Darkness. Let's start with Pickup. So we're gonna be using Bridge again. And I, I hope that you're starting to see now the, the process. It's always Pickup, Amp, and then Effects on top of it. If you start with Effects straight out, then, then you're just gonna be lost in all these parameters, effects that don't sound great. And um, if you don't have the bass correct, then it's never gonna sound right or like the recording. So bridge pickup, in terms of amp, we're just going lead here. We're going to be using the amp as our distortion. And again, as I mentioned before, you can go down two different routes. You could put on a clean channel and then add a distortion pedal in front of it, or you could use the distortion straight out of the amp. And that's what I've done here with the lead amp channel. So I've pushed the gain to about 50, um, EQ's more or less flat, and um, this is what it'll sound like. But it's a little too dry, so what I've done is I've added some reverb, and it'll sound like this. So it sounds a bit bigger, sounds like you're in a, a stadium kinda. All right, let's move on to our next tone, which is Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. Now let's start with our uh, guitar settings. Now in terms of pickup selection, we're gonna be using the neck pickup here, surprisingly. So the reason for that is I feel like this tone is a bit more sireny. It's got um, a bit more like, it's a bit of a wider, fatter sound. So that's why I'm using the neck pickup here. In terms of amp channels, I'm using um, the brown amp. So the brown amp on the Katana is a high gain amp. And I've got the gain pushed up pretty high here is at 73. Um, now I'll leave the reverb off now just so you can hear how it sounds. So it's not bad, but it's a little dry. And you can see how it's, you know, by using the neck pickup, you kind of get that sireny sound. So let's add the reverb and this is the tone. Now I'll show you what it sounds like with the bridge. And that's actually fine as well. Um, but I prefer the neck. I think it sounds more sireny, as I mentioned before. Maybe a little more true to the song, in my opinion. So let's move on to our final tone, which is A Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. Awesome guitar riff. Now let's start with the guitar settings and I am using the bridge pickup here because it's distorted tone, distorted rhythm. Generally speaking, you wanna be using your bridge. Amp settings, we're using a crunch amp here. Now this song and this tone is not that heavy. It's actually quite um, dialed back in terms of distortion. Um, so this is what we have so far. So it's pretty weak in, terms of its distortion. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a 60s fuzz in, on front of it um, to beef it up a little bit. So it's a little more ballsy now. So let's add one last thing and that's a reverb. And this is the tone. Now in the actual recording, there's this like slap back reverb that you hear. And I think that's more to do with the mix as opposed to the guitar tone, but correct me if I'm wrong. But I think that's a pretty good uh, emulation of the whole lot of love guitar tone. So that's the last tone from the Les Paul versus Strat video. Again, all these Boss Katana tone patches will be in the link in the description below. I hope you've learned a thing or two about how to build your own tone. And just to recap, you always want to start with a good foundation. And also do your research. If you're trying to emulate a tone from a famous guitar player, try to find out what pedals they use, what amps they use. That will help to guide you in the pursuit of that tone. So I always like to start by using the right pickup selection first, then using the right amp selection and then adding the pedals in front of that.
If you have any questions about this video, then please leave them in the comments below. Please hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.